Cards so you can hear things. You'll need speakers to go with the sound cards, fans to keep everything cool. You gotta have a power supply and a case to hold all of this stuff. And of course, the motherboard and storage, floppy, hard drives, optical drives like a CD-ROM. If you wanna get online, you're also gonna need a modem or a network interface card. You ready, Leo? I'm ready, let's it's go! Time to put it all together. We're gonna start with the PC's core components. The CPU, the motherboard, wow. the memory, and of course, the case and the power supply. You put them all in. It's like my birthday here. Look at all this stuff, I'm Amazing. so excited. This really is the fun part. We're gonna start with the case. Mm -hmm. You gotta get the case together before you can put all these nice pieces into it. We're gonna start by opening up the case so we can you know, get inside. We, uh, we have the power supply here. Let me get that out of the way, and I'm gonna turn the case around so you can see what we have to remove here. We've gotta remove these screws that are holding the panels on so we can get inside the case. This is where Patrick, I'm gonna have a big advantage with my power <coughs> screwdriver. I love this thing. We just zip these off. Go ahead, you go ahead, Patrick, and do yours. Look and see, care, you know, you don't, you often don't need to remove all the screws. In fact, you probably don't want to remove all the screws. Just enough to get into the case. In this, in this particular case, there are three screws holding on each panel. All right, so you beat me. Don't show off. So, and once you get yep. the panel off, you'll be able to see inside. That is an empty case. There's nothing in it, not even a power supply. Here's where you've got your mayonnaise lid or your screw container. Right. That's going to come very handy. Don't lose these screws. Put them somewhere safe. Put the uh, case uh, uh, panel aside because you're not going to need to put that back until you're all done with the system. Now, when you're looking at this, when you buy your case, right, make sure this is the area where the power supply goes if it's not mounted in there. What I want you to do when you're looking at that, make sure the power supply doesn't cover up the area where you're going to put the motherboard in. You know why? It makes it hard to get the motherboard in and out. You got to pull the power supply in and out anytime you do anything. We want you to be able to put the power supply in, forget about it, then put the rest of the components in your system. So you ready to put a power supply in? I'm doing in that video? right now. Many cases these days come with power supplies already attached and you oftentimes get your case that way. We wanted to show you how to put in a power supply because sometimes you want to upgrade the power supply. Inexpensive cases often come with pretty bad power supplies and since the power is what determines the, uh, uh, the reliability and the effectiveness of the machine, it's important to get a power supply that really has all the juice you need. You got to get that in just in the right spot. Am I doing it right there, Patrick? Are you doing it? Am I upside I down? You You're upside oh, down. Oh, look at that, see? By the way, on the other side of the power supply, these are all the connectors that are going to connect up to the motherboard and the peripherals. You don't have to worry about those, but if you have them outside the case, you've done it wrong. <laughs> we know that much for sure. There, that fits nicely. And you'll see there are screw holes on the back of the power supply that match the holes on the back of the case. How are you doing, Pat? Are you almost done? Uh, Show yeah. off? I knew it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm almost there. Usually once you got the power supply, inside the power supply, once you've got it, you make sure you make sure the fan's clear, you got that plug on the back. Let me actually flip this around. So when it's in, it should look nice and neat and orderly. All these holes should match up as you put them in. This is where your power supply, your power cord goes in. This is the fan. It helps ventilate. Generally, on your system, it'll either be a fan on the inside of the power supply or ventilating the outside of the case. That pulls air through the power supply, cools your system down. You see this spaghetti in my left hand? Don't ever pick up it. Don't do this. Patrick, ever. stop it's bad it. It's bad for your system. Stop it, Patrick. Don't do that. Now, You're this, a bad man. I'm not a bad You're man. You're torturing that case. Thing. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, look at this spaghetti inside your case. Now, if you've done your job specking out your parts, there's something you're going to need. These little puppies. All right, these are the power supplies. These are the plugs. The Molex connectors. Uh, let me put one up. The Molex connectors, these go into your hard drive. You need it, and your CD-ROM drives, all those stuff. You're going to need one of these things for each of the devices inside your computer. All right, I got my power supply in. What do I do next? It's time to put in the motherboard. Uh -huh. Now, actually, we should say something. You got a, you got a decision. There's a, there's a crossroads you come to here. We're you at a crux. A crux. All you right. have to make a decision. We hate making decisions. You might too. You got two options. You can either put the motherboard into the case and then put all the other stuff onto the motherboard, or if you're, if you're a little nervous about working inside of here, especially if you're working with an Athlon processor, they're a little sensitive. I've broken one or two putting them or together. Three. You might want to, no or more than four. four. <laughs> now, this is your motherboard. What you may want to do is actually put the processor and the heat sink and the fan on the motherboard and then put the whole thing assembled 
inside the case. There's another thing you're going to want to do before you get the motherboard in there, and that's kind of prepare the case by putting the motherboard risers, risers. onto the case. Let me just show you. This case, like mm -hmm. most cases, has many different uh, screw holes in a lot of different places that you could put it. Let me make sure you can see that. So it's and that's because every motherboard has different positioning of the screws on here, so they give you a lot of compatibility, uh, a variety for compatibility. Very, very important that you put the risers in exactly where there are going to be holes for them on the motherboard. What you really don't want to do is put in a riser somewhere where it's not going to actually go through a hole in the motherboard, but touch the back of the motherboard. It can actually short circuit the motherboard there, and you'll literally ruin your motherboard. So where are my risers? I need some risers. You got okay. some there? It should be a little plastic package. Normally, a lot of times, they actually tape it down on the inside of your case. There it is. First thing you do when you get your case home, you take it out of its big box, you look inside, there should be a little plastic bag full of parts. The risers, in my case, case are brass. Right. They have a threaded screw on one end and then they have a little pentagonal uh, hole at the top. That's what the screw is going to come into from the other side on the motherboard. You'll also see I have some paper washers in mm -hmm. there. You're going to use the paper washers to insulate the motherboard against the riser. So the right. first thing to do is to kind of look at where the motherboard is going to go in the machine, and you're going to orient it so that the connectors are on the back plane of the machine. They've got to line up with these connector holes on the back plane of the machine. See for the peripherals, can you see that right down there? So we're going to make sure that those line up with this, and that'll give me some idea of where to put the risers in, because I have holes in my motherboard where I want to screw in the, the motherboard to the risers. So match the holes. Uh, on the motherboard to where you're going to put the risers on the case. Does that is that make sense? That makes sense. You know what though? There's there's different ways of doing it. My case came with these little. Sometimes they're plastic. In this case, they're actually little metal bits. And these do the same thing as Leo's brass risers. They stand up the motherboard off the bottom of the case, and they give you to something to actually screw the motherboard down in there. Again, Ooh, I have the that's same kind of screws cool. with little paper washers. And again, you know what? You you laid it down there gently. You look at there. You figure out where all these holes are and you put one of these risers for each of those. The places you especially want to be most careful about is around here, the front of the cards, the PCI slots where you're mounting that down in there because that's where you're going to be pushing these cards down in place. So make sure you use all of those. Well, I've put in now one, two, three. I'm going to put six risers in total and I'm just going to see if I've matched up every riser with a hole on the motherboard. This is often difficult and this is the uh, tricky part here is matching up the face plate with the connectors you've got on the back of your motherboard. Sometimes they give you multiple face plates. Uh, in this case, um, uh, I've only got one face plate. Uh, you may have to punch holes out. You see we have, uh, it's not punched out here. That's because we don't need that. That's for extra USB ports. So if they're not punched out, you just take a screwdriver. May I borrow a flathead here real quickly? Hmm. And you'll just pry off that little extra bit of metal so that you can get the connectors through there. We've already pried off all of the ones I need. This is going to be where my connectors for my sound card are going to go. This is a serial port. This is a printer port. We've got the mouse and the keyboard, the USB ports, and uh, the extra serial ports here. So I'm just going to try to match those up. Now these two things right here, these donuts, are actually where we're going to put screws in to mm, tighten it down. Donuts. Donut. We like, you know, we're going to have donuts after we finish <laughs> these. Sometimes though, the little holes don't match up with the risers. Remember we put the risers in to keep the motherboard off the bottom of the case. I don't want you the last thing I want you to do, right, is to reach in here and start grabbing. This stuff all looks like handles. We got these little They're cans not that are called capacitors. Handles. They're not. You can rip no. them off. You can break them. What I want you to do is to work from the edge of the motherboard and to use the edge of the motherboard to slide it in place. Now, this is only going to work if you don't actually tighten down every screw on the motherboard as you go. Start them. Turn them in a couple times. It's Get every screw that you want to put in there started first, and then, and only then, just tighten them all down. Because if you tighten all four of these and you have to shift the motherboard over here, it's not going to work. Before I screw in my motherboard, let me do this outside so everybody yeah. can see what I'm doing. You can do yours inside. I'm going to take my motherboard back out of the case. Oh, yeah, I was almost done. But I'm going to let Patrick win this race because I really want you to see it <laughs> when I drop in this AMD chip and put the heat sink on it and put in the RAM. This socket it, right here is very common for any socketed chip. It's called a ZIF or Zero Insertion Force Socket. When I raise the lever, it's ready for inserting my processor. Two of the corners are cut. That's important. Those two cut corners have to match the same cut corners 
on the processor itself. So this is the orientation that I'm going to put the processor in. You do not have to push the processor in. It's a zero insertion force. That means no force. You see that? It just popped right in. And then once it's in, and make sure it really is in.